hello friends now in the previous session we have discussed about the environmental clearance which is the part of environmental management and now it is a environmental impact assessment so we have discussed in the environmental clearance that whatever the negative impact whatever the adverse impact of the new project of the existing project which can be modernized or which can be expanded that all the study of this negative or the adverse impact on the human health um, of the environment that may be in terms of air pollution that may be in terms of water pollution that may be in terms of soil pollution that may be in terms of other pollutions so whatever the negative impacts whatever the adverse impact due to the activities on the environment that is called as environmental impact that should be assessed so this is the mandatory condition for a specific project which is given under the environmental clearance and that is why we must know what exactly the eia in detail so from this flow chart you can understand what exactly the eia process and methodology is so this environment impact assessment process and methodology so this is the starting from point for this eia that is nothing but the site selection so the initial stage is for the new project for the existing project what exactly the site selection is because if the existing site is there it means the site selection is already done and it is verified by the authorities but if you are going for the new project then your site must be verified and authorized by the government authorities because whether this site is apart from the uh, residential area whether it is uh, away from the main area that is the environmental factors because in case of any issues related to the environment if it is badly affect on the surrounding area then that should not be affect on the residential area or some other areas that is called as environmental factors and for that purpose we must adopt this first or initial stage that we should pass this site selection criteria so that committee members that expert committee members are going to scrutinize this site selection criteria then we have to conduct a environment impact assessment that is eia so under this environment impact assessment there are variety of factors and parameters that is involved under this eia activities so the environmental factors or the adverse impacts may be on the air that may be on the water that may be on the soil that may be in terms of sound pollution that may be in terms of some poisonous or toxic or hazardous substances that may be in terms of some hazardous waste that may be in terms of some toxic waste or solid waste etc or it may directly affect on the aquatic animals when you are going to mix this waste or the uh, effluent to the water bodies so all these things are going to verify assess in the environment impact assessment activity then the next one is apply for noc that is no objection certificate if in this eia all the environmental impacts that is adverse impact on the environment are at negligible level or within the permissible levels of pollution control board that may be state pollution control board or central pollution control board then they can grant or sanction this no objection certificate for that particular site then spcb arranges a public hearing if the environment impact assessment is good if they can provide the noc for that particular organization then they can go for the public hearing to 
uh, know about the awareness about this environmental impact assessment from the public point of view so what exactly the impact may be there on the public on the residential area on the soil air water nearby to that particular site so that can be communicated by the public in the public hearing activity to the state pollution control board officers then after public hearing if the public uh, is not going to object any type of uh, impacts or the operations or the process which is involved under that project then project proponent apply for the environmental clearance that is for ec and submitting required documents that is ei report noc and spcb etc so if the environment impact assessment is done then the detailed report of this environment impact assessment should be prepared then after getting this noc and if there is no objection from the public then you can go for the environmental clearance if the ei is clear if the noc is okay from the state pollution control board uh, rules and regulation point of view then you may get the environmental clearance depending on that conditions time to time then there is a review by the environmental appraisal committee that is eac and if all the things are good are positive then that proposal is going to accept by the state pollution control board or by the central pollution control board representatives and environmental clearance can be done if they suggest some of the modifications or some corrections rectifications in some of the processes or in the operations or in the layout etc then all these things should be corrected modified or changed as per their spcb or eac suggestions and then they can again go to the second step of this ei process like conduct of ei again after suggestions implementations or execution then again for noc then again for public hearing then new proposal after modifications rectifications and then again review if it is all the suggestions are incorporated in that report all the suggestions are implemented or executed as per the satisfaction of e eac then they can accept this report and then they can sanction the environmental clearance if the proposal is going to reject then eac have to give the reasons or the causes of rejections and then after rejection then the particular organizations have to think about the activities their environmental impacts and then they can go for the change in the site locations or they can go for the process change or they can go for the modification or rectification in the processes or the operations so that the impact or the adverse impact on the environment should be reduced and then for from the new location or from the new site from the new or modernized methods they can again apply for the ei for the eis that is the ei process and methodology which can be easily understood with the help of this process flow chart so all these uh, process flow chart points are discussed in these slides that is environmental process is required for the 39 types of projects and covers aspects like screening scoping evaluation and the upcoming projects so which we have already discussed in the environmental clearance part the main purpose is to assess the impact of the plan project on the environment and people and try to abate or minimize the same so we have to minimize these negative impacts on the environment negative impacts on the uh, person's health that is the main objective of this ei activity the process consists of project proponent identifies the locations then citing guidelines are 
given by the state and central government uh, representatives and if there is assessment activities then the proposed activities or the project can be assessed by the expert persons and these notifications then the proponent conducts an EI study either directly or through the consultants so we have to identify whether the project is of a type whether it is of b type whether it is of b1 or b2 type so all these uh, types or the categories of this project and their criteria we have discussed in the environmental clearance presentation then after the ei report the state pollution control board and the state forest department is going to decide whether to accept this uh, application or not then depending on the quantity and quality of the effluent which is generated from that project from the modernization or expansion of that project they have to check whether all these maximum permissible limits are followed by that project and the activities are not then noc can be given within the 15 days period by the spcb to that concerned organizations if everything is okay then minister of environment and forest uh, and central government can gives you the environmental clearance for that project then we have already discussed about this public hearing uh, the additional point is that the district collector or the representative of the district collector may conduct this public hearing and the officials from the district development body state pollution control board department of environment and forest taluka and gram panchayat representative and senior citizens of the districts are the part of this public hearing so hearing committee hears the objections suggestions from the public and after inserting the certain clauses it is passed on the next stage of the approval then we all uh, discuss about this environmental appraisal uh, which is the part or the functioning of the ministry of environment and forest and climate change who may also undertake site visits so if they found that we should conduct the site visits we should interact with the peoples we should interact with the investors or the consult then they can go for that type of activities also and after the satisfaction then they can recommend the aec committee or acac committee to sanction these types of projects that may be a river valley that may be a large scale industries that may be a construction activities that may be a mining activities etc so the scrutiny uh, by the eac acac recommendations their their executions all these things are important from the mof and cc point of view then uh, rejection letter so the project may be rejected by the eac or acac and uh, with the clear uh, causes or the reasons they can be reject this type of project as the environmental impacts are more due to these projects and that is the main reason for the rejections then ei report so we have discussed about the ei process and methodology what is the environmental clearance and now what are the contents of this ei report so ei report can be a stand alone document or can form a part of the dpr that is detail project report or feasibility report what is meant by feasibility report whether this project is feasible or not right so the various particular factors to be considered in ei report however in general the following are the common guidelines or the elements in this ei reports are project descriptions so describes the proposed project and its geographic ecological social and temporal context including any offset investment that may be required indicates the need for any set resettlement or social development plan so this is the one of the element of this 
EIR report or DPR of feasibility reports. So geographic location, ecological conditions, social conditions, then the temporal context and any offset investments. Then the baseline data that may be related to the physical, biological, socio-economic conditions, including all the changes anticipated before the project commences and within an area around the project site. So under current regulations in India, this is a radius of 10 or 25 kilometer of the site. So this is the basic conditions from this rule that this is the radius that is 10 or 25 kilometer depending on the type of project and the activity. Depending on whether the site is in the vicinity of sensitive areas such as national parks, sanctuaries or archaeological monuments. So depending on these conditions, uh, whether this radius is 10 or 25 kilometers. So if you uh, want to avoid the environmental impacts, if you want to avoid the disturbances to the animals in the forest or in this park or the disturbances to the birds. So these types of sensitive areas are declared by the central government where you can't do any type of activities under the radius of 25 kilometer uh, without the sanctioning of the central government that is under the baseline data. Then the next point is environmental impacts. So predicts and assess the projects likely positive and negative. Identify the mitigation measures and any negative environmental impact that can be mitigated. So you have to predict some of the positive and negative impacts and you also think about the mitigation measures to cope up or to reduce the negative impact on the environment. Explore the opportunities for the environmental enhancement. Then analysis of alternatives. So we have to also think about the uh, feasible alternatives, which is the good or better alternatives rather than the conventional or the available alternatives. So whether the project is essential for that particular society or for that organizations or not, without project, what are the conditions? Uh, is there any other substitute of that project is there or not, whether it is feasible or not, and whether uh, the impact of uh, that may be a technical, a social or economical. So we have to think from all the point of view and we have to search for the uh, feasible alternatives for this project. Then environmental monitoring program, that is EMP, uh, environmental management plan, we must think about, we have to uh, decide the mitigation measures, we have to monitor the different parameters like uh, air emissions, then energy measurements, then soil pollutants, water pollutants, etc. And how to reduce these pollutants, how to reduce the impact of these pollutants in that area. So all these things should be decided under this environmental monitoring program and environmental management plan. Then description of project, cost and benefits. So consultation and summary and conclusion are the various points. The records of consultation meetings, including consultation for obtaining or informed views of this project affected peoples, local NGOs and regulatory agencies. Disclosure also of the consultants that were engaged during the studies. Nowadays, the disclosure of this information, disclosure of all this information on the website, through the public hearing, through the newspaper, through the different media, are the routine things that is for the consultation. Then covering the jurisdiction or justification for this project and the approach to mitigative uh, measures that is uh, due to the adverse impacts. So what exactly the 
justification for this project how to mitigate the adverse impact how to reduce the negative impact of this project all these things are uh, covered under this summary and conclusion point of this ei reports so these are the different points which should be included in the environment impact assessment report which is the part of the environment clearance thank you